friends, this video on natural resources part 8 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So this was all about air. Now let's talk about another uh, natural resource which is just present naturally in uh, around us and that's rain. So what comes to your mind when you think of rain? So a rainy day reminds us of an umbrella or a raincoat, a holiday on a rainy day, a rainy season is full of water everywhere. So what causes rain? So what causes so much of water suddenly falling down on the earth? So what, what causes rain? So let's understand the entire process of what makes rain happen. Now, when you look at the water bodies, now if you look at the entire planet earth, uh, more, more than half of it is covered with water. So we have huge number of water bodies. Now, during daytime in the presence of sun, the water gets heated. And when water gets heated, a large amount of water also evaporates. That is the water gets converted into water vapor. So that's common. Now, what happens when the water gets converted into water vapor? Now, when the water is getting heated, the layer of air exactly above this water body like that is the air which is located somewhere here so that air is also getting heated now when the air gets heated what happens that hot air rises up because as we know hot air is less dense and anything which is less dense will rise up now this hot air is not only hot air the hot air also contains the water vapor in it like this water vapor which was formed. So the water evaporates. So here in the water bodies you have water, they evaporate to form water vapor. At the same time, they heat the air above the water bodies. So the hot air along with the water vapor, they start rising up. Now as the air starts rising up, it gradually starts cooling down as well because you know gradually it is going away from this hot water body. So as it rises up, it gradually cools down. Now, as the air gradually cools down, what happens? This cooling causes condensation of the water vapor into liquid water droplets because right now, what is going up? So right now, whatever was going up was basically a mixture of hot air plus the water vapor. But when they have gone sufficiently up, the hot air start cooling down. So when the hot air cools down, what will happen? The water vapor, now the way when you heat, let's say you take water and you heat water. So what will happen? Evaporation will take place. So water will get converted to water vapor. Now similarly, if you do the other way around. So if you have water vapor and if you cool it, then what will happen? It will get converted to liquid water droplets. So that is what is happening. So as it has reached at sufficiently height, the air cools down and this cooling causes condensation of water vapor into liquid water droplets. Now, where do, where do these liquid water droplets go? So this liquid water droplets, they start accumulating on dust particles which are present in the atmosphere. So in the atmosphere, you have a lot of dust particles and all. So on, let, let's assume here that this black thing that you see, this represents a dust particle and this is the blue thing is the water liquid water droplets. So on this dust particle, the liquid water droplet starts accumulating. So what happens? You have you had lot of water vapor here. So all of that water vapor is gradually getting converted to liquid water droplets. So all of these liquid water droplets gradually, you know, kind of condense together. They all come together. So they all group together and gradually they turn bigger and bigger. And this is what that makes the cloud. And when the cloud become big and heavy enough they fall down as rain rain because as long as they are not that heavy that that means they remain at the top as long as they are not very dense when they as long as they are less dense the moment they become very heavy very dense they tend to come down and how do they come, come down they come down in the form of water droplets because cloud is nothing but the condensed form of water so basically it is water droplets only so then it comes down in the form of water droplets and that is what we see as rain. Now sometimes if the temperature is extremely uh, low, for example in uh, the hill stations, you might have seen that 
there is no rainfall rather there is snowfall that's because the temperature was so less that these liquid water droplets were not liquid water droplets rather they were small bits of snow or small bits of ice so it falls in the form of ice so this is how rain is caused so i hope that this entire process appeared simple so let's so let us look at a quick recap of the entire process of formation of rain. So the first step is water evaporates from water bodies in presence of the sun. Then this water vapor heats up the air. So this air, get, air gets heated up. Now hot air is less dense, therefore it rises up. Now this hot air also contains the water vapor with it. Now as the air rises up, it gradually cools. Now when the air cools down what happens the water vapor condenses to form liquid water droplets these liquid water droplets they get accumulated on the dust particles which are present in the atmosphere now the water droplets gradually turn bigger and bigger now water droplets when heavy enough they fall as rain so this is a simple uh, process by which rains happen now, what's the importance of rain? Why, I mean, is there any importance of rain at all? Well, rain plays a very crucial role. Firstly, in agriculture, because as we all know that uh, for cultivation, we need a lot of water because plants need water. Water uh, contains several nutrients dissolved in it. And as a result, when this water is taken up by the plants through their roots, the through this water, the plant gets all the necessary nutrients. So water is a key ingredient for the growth and development of plants. So we need water. So for agriculture, in fact, even if you see even today uh, in villages, the farmers, they desperately wait for rain. So when, that, when the rainy season comes, the, their entire fields get irrigated. Secondly, rain provides fresh water which is needed for survival of various life forms. So water is something which is needed by all the life forms. So we all need water, right? So from rain, we actually get some fresh water because otherwise you might say that okay, in the oceans also we have so much of water, but that is all salt water. So if we want to get fresh water from the ocean, we actually need to remove the salt from the seawater so that is again a, a long process a time consuming as well as a, a process which involves a lot of cost so there so that ways rain is you know it's like a direct source of fresh water and fresh water is something which is needed by survival of different life forms whether it is plants animals insects birds so all of them need water Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four-step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.